we are taking a trip to Chile from our morning live wine bar set. <laughs> Super wine girl Angela Aiello joins us with a special guest this morning, Andrea Calderon from 1867 Wines in Chile. Thank you for coming up here and enduring our winter because it's your spring right now, yes. right? <laughs> right, right. Okay, so what kind of wines did you bring for us then? Uh, today we're going to taste a uh, Carmenere, which is a different variety like you don't see many often. So it's a variety we are uh, working a lot in Chile. So that's the, the wine we're going to taste today. Okay. And, and Angela, what makes wine from Chile? What kind of sets it apart? Well, Chile is actually the skinniest country in the world. And so it has this very rare Mediterranean climate. And what I love about 1865 is the number is actually indicative of when the winery started, 1865, and they're leaders in renewable energy. So not only are their wines fantastic, and Andrea does a fan, wonderful wine of creating world-class wines, but they actually have more behind the bottle than just great wine, which is fantastic. And Carbonair, if we give it a little swirl and a smell. Okay, we're doing that today. <laughs> <laughs> what I love about <laughs> Carmenere is it's a bit of a long lost grape and it has a home in a Chile. I, I haven't so, heard of it before, yeah. It actually is rooted from the word crimson, which means purple or magenta colored, which you can tell from the wine that it is that color. And it actually is originally from France, but made its way over to Chile. And its original rootstock is in Chile. So, oh. so you have a very special grape then to, to work with for this. Yes, yes. Actually, like we, we thought it was Merlot, so it was planted there and we have like the Merlot and the late Merlot and the late Merlot resulted to be uh, Carmenere. So we found out now that in 1994, so we've been uh, developing the variety since there. So yeah, so our, our like 30 years old, like 30 years like developing, so you know, we know more of the variety now, mm -hmm. uh, where to plant it and all the kind of things that you need to know to have this beautiful wine today in your glass. And, and what makes it different from a Merlot? Um, it's like the, the aromas are, are, are different, like it's very similar because it's very soft wine, mm -hmm. it's very easy to drink. It, it is mm -hmm. very easy to drink and Angela knows I'm not a red wine person but I like this. Mm, it's yeah. smooth and it's it very has smooth. satin tannins on it. Mm -hmm. So in a way it is a lot like Merlot, even though there are sort of very unique differences, but it has that lovability that Merlot has, and it has the uniqueness of the region, which is quite wonderful as well. Okay, yeah. so you've, you've brought a, a lovely spread here. We didn't prepare this. This, just, <laughs> this isn't what we get in the green room all the time on Morning Live. So what kind of things would you pair it with? This is Friday night dinner for those yeah. of us that oh, love yeah. wine and cheese, right? <laughs> charcuterie for dinner, I'm all in. <laughs> so um, best pairing, I love pairing cheese and charcuterie with, with red wine. and. I also like mature cheeses with, with uh, red wine as well. So I often find cheese pairs well with white wine, but when you're headed into red wine category, you want to elevate the flavor profiles and the textures with harder cheese. And also a little bit more sort of uh, funkier cheese. So you can go into the blue cheese category. I've got some Comte, some Manchego, some aged Gouda, and some aged cheddar here, which I love pouring with some honey on it also. It makes mm -hmm. it really That's dynamic. Great. But you know, I also have this really easy rule about wine and food pairing. If the color of the wine matches the color of the food, it's going to be OK. And so when you go into the charcuterie world, I mean, have fun with all your Red meats. meat. <laughs> exactly. You've got prosciutto, salami, copa. There's so many wonderful ways to dive into red wine and meat mm -hmm. on the on cheese board. Mm -hmm. So so you're uh, in Toronto and, and Montreal for a little visit and things. Um, are, are you doing special tastings or any special events? Yes, yes, we are. Uh, we're releasing this wine on Friday. So we are making like a lot of events here and in Montreal. We're flying there tomorrow, so yeah. And I start like I travel a little bit around to taste some Canadian wines as well. <laughs> oh, oh, that's good. You're doing yeah. your research, right? Yes, <laughs> yes. of course, of course, yes. important. <laughs> so, uh, does this mean then that they're available in LCBO as of Friday? As of Friday, the Carmenere comes out for 19.95, and then coming into the holidays, we have the Cabernet Sauvignon being launched as well, also in the 19.95 mark. So, wonderful wines for holiday entertaining to get out there and. Uh, shop before they sell out. Yes, I, I feel like so honored that we got like a special sneak peek before anybody else does. This is awesome. So Andrea, thank you very much for coming up and, and doing this. And, and Angela, thank you for, for your knowledge of wine. And let's end the show on a cheers. Okay, Salud. cheers. Salud. 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 <laughs> that is really nice. 
it's smooth, isn't it? Very, like, very tannins smooth. are yeah. soft. And 